Hello everybody, this is David. I'm vlogging a little bit for Diana. I'm on my way with Ayana to stop by my mom's house and pick up a couple things for her. And after that we're going to go to the wedding, which is this afternoon. We're here in Augusta, Georgia where I grew up. So I'm pretty familiar with all this stuff. So how's everybody doing out there on YouTube? Am I talking loud enough? Am I talking loud enough, Ayanna? People mm -hmm. always say, why don't you vlog? Why don't you vlog? Um, first of all, I don't have a camera. So I'm not a part of it. Two, you know, I'm the kind of person that likes to talk a lot, but I like to talk a lot about something. Rather than just... I'm brushing my teeth or combing my hair. So sometimes people ask me questions. I've gotten so many questions. I don't think I can answer them in a year of vlogging or vlogging. I guess that's the term vlogging. I gotta remember to speak up. Because I'm a quiet spoken person. I don't know if I was always that way. But I don't like to yell in people's ears. It's, Space. But anyway, um, lots of questions people are always ask me. Of course, they ask me questions about weight loss all the time, like this and this and that. Um, I've talked a little bit about it before. Weight loss, being the partner, spouse of the weight loss patient. You know, it's kind of a trip that two people take. It's not just one person. If one person is going through a weight loss situation, the other person is too, just on a different on the other side of it. Well, I don't really have any advice other than you know, stick to the program. And that's the problem I see most people have is sticking to it. You know, I was never morbidly obese. Um, I think the most I ever weighed was 450 pounds, I'm, I'm sure I'd want to do weight loss surgery. Because just from my experience, it gives someone a jump start, you know, gets them started. What it is is that it's like they're behind a big boulder. Like Sisyphus, you know, you're pushing it up the hill every day, and every day it rolls back down. And the next day you got to push the boulder back up the hill. A lot of times people are discouraged because one small step doesn't seem to make any difference. What's funny is when I'm in the gym, sometimes I'll even see people come in for one day or two days, and they'll have a personal trainer, and they'll be tremendously overweight. When I say that, a man may be weighing over 300, a woman over 200, and the personal trainer will have them doing things that's really not going to help in the long run. And immediately, you can see the despair that this person goes, well, I don't want to be doing this every day for the next few weeks. Here's the point. When I see somebody that weighs 250, 300 pounds, I'm thinking to myself, are they willing to put in the effort for two years, which is about what it's going to take for you to get some semblance of where you want to go. In today's society, people, you know, it's hard. People don't want to do that. You know, I'm training for a triathlon in June. There's two races, one in June and one in July, uh, August. The first one's a short one just to get ready. The second one is a long one. The first one's going to take me about an hour and a half. And the second one's going to take me about two and a half hours, three hours to race it. And why did I do that? I've always been someone that wanted to have a goal. And I found that that's important. If I have a goal, Hey, by a certain, certain date, drop dead date, I gotta be ready to do this. It helps me get ready. It gives me some motivation. You know, I'm like everybody else, I get tired and don't wanna do it. But uh, for me, that helps. Number one thing that helps is to have a goal. Number two, one thing that helps me, and I don't know why I brought this up, I just kind of segued into this topic. Even when I'm a little bit tired, I don't feel like doing it, I talk myself into it like this. I said, well, you don't feel so well, you know, you're a little bit tired from yesterday. Why don't you just do five or ten minutes in the pool or the treadmill, just see how you feel. And for 
some reason, my uh, part of my body that don't like working out, and we all have that part that don't like it, because it's a little bit selfish. We say, okay, I can live with that. But then what happens most of the time, if not all the time, I'll get in there and the, the way I felt goes away pretty quickly and I feel just the opposite. I feel energized. In fact, some of the days when I feel like I don't want to do it the most is the days that I enjoy it the best. Isn't that kind of weird? I'm not saying the body fights you, but there's something about the body in that will resist change. You know, this goes back thousands of years. The body loves its fat because it knows that that fat is like go is like Fort Knox. That is a source of energy that it can count on if things go bad quickly. I remember reading a story when I was in college about the people who lived in the 1700s, 1800s, and they go on these long journeys. You know, they'd be crossing the wilderness. I mean, going hundreds of miles. And when they would go and hunt, they didn't care about eating meat. They didn't care about eating anything other than killing the game and eating the fat. Because even then, they knew that fast fat was a tremendous con condensed source of energy. I was reading the other day that a pound of fat is, one, two, three, four, five, seven. I want to say, you know, I got, I'm going to have to look that up. It's in the thousands of calories. And that to lose a pound of fat only, you would have to. That's right, now it's coming back to me. To lose a pound of fat only, not water and all the other way, in a week, you would have to walk five miles a day for seven straight days to lose one pound of fat. That's how concentrated that source of energy is. So the point being that the body knows this, this source of energy is concentrated. So if I've got 10 pounds of fat, that's enough for my body to live off of more than just a few days. People, like, sometimes they get caught in a situation where they're, you know, like some of these reality TV shows. Oh, they're dying. They ain't got nothing to eat. After three days, they think they're going to die because they don't have anything to eat. The reality is the body's waiting to see if, you're gonna, if it has to shift over to its fat reserve. Because then you get your kind of a second win. People can go without eating so much much longer than they than they think they can. There's exceptions to everything, but if I have 10 pounds of fat, that's a lot of energy that my body has access to. And it doesn't like losing. Wow, I wish we could save money in the bank like our body saves fat in the bank. It loves to save. And it doesn't like using it. If there's something else in the body like carbohydrates and sugar and all that that it can use for energy, it will use that first. But everybody knows that. So the weight loss journey, uh, I'm not the expert for weight loss patients. I can only tell you from my experience and what I've learned that works for me and honestly works for a lot of people to be in, have a res relatively healthy lifestyle. You basically for all of your life, and if, it's, if you're starting out from this point for the rest of your life, you have to do two things, otherwise, it's not really going to work. This is most cases. You have to eat reasonably, just like me. You can find all kinds of calorie plans, and you don't have to starve yourself. But you eat reasonably. You eat the right foods. You eat the, eat the right amount. And you do some sort of exercise. If someone says. 100 pounds overweight and then they start eating the amount of calories that their body needs every day, they can drop their calorie count to that amount and they don't exercise, guess what? They're not going to lose any weight. So what do they have to do? They have to drastically cut. You know, Dr. Now on the 600 pound life, he puts them on a 1200 calorie diet, no carbohydrates. That's tough. I'm going to tell you something, if they do that for a month and lose 30 pounds, that sh the reason he does that, that shows him that they have the willpower to do it. He 
just wants to see if they have the willpower to do it for a month, but that's not easy. Y'all tried our 1200 calorie diet and no bread, no sweets, no carbohydrates. That means nothing that has carbohydrates in it and just eat 95% protein. You're gonna find out after about two days that man, this diet sucks. It's a drastic diet because he needs them to show, he needs them to uh, change their eating habits. Because you see the people, right? Getting two and three pizzas. I feel for them. So as a spouse, when, or a partner, when your person that you're with is going on this journey, it's uh, going to be a lot of the, a lot, I don't say attention, maybe that's the right word, a lot of attention paid to this journey. You're going to have to give a lot of attention to it. They're going to need a lot of support and a lot of attention. They're going to go through all kinds of things depending on if they had surgery or they didn't have, they the same thing. And as far as, you know, advice for a partner a spouse is, it's a long journey and it's going to be just as tough for you as it is for them, but in a different way. Theirs is an emotional and eating situation. Yours is mostly emotion. Why? You have thought thoughts and considered things that you never told your overweight partner that you've kept to yourself. And I want to say a lot of times it's done out of love because you can't change people. You may, you know, sometimes we'll say things, this, this, that. But generally we keep our mouths shut. Sometimes I don't realize, I don't think the partners realize how much we keep our mouths shut about how we think our partner is killing themselves or wounding their life. But you know there's absolutely nothing you can do about it but keep your mouth shut. There's not else you can do about it. Until this person recognizes within themselves that they need to make a change, they're not going to. All that aside, that's a topic for many, many videos. I could talk about this all day, every day, just from my viewpoint. What has worked or what hasn't worked. But for partners, you're in for the long haul and it doesn't end. If the person can be successful, then you can enjoy success with them. But it's tough. I'm going to say one more thing. If someone is morbidly obese or even, I don't know what where the dividing line is for morbidly. Is it twice your body weight? Is it three times your body weight? I don't know. And I would say almost every case is going to be a journey of not just eating habits and exercise, it's going to be an emotional journey because they, you know, this is just the facts, there are issues underlying all of that activity that don't come out until later. Even when a morbidly obese person loses a lot of weight or all their weight, they still feel a lot of times the same way about who they are and what they are. They're not really, sometimes they're not really satisfied with where they've been. And I don't go around preaching to everybody, hey, you need therapy. Like Dr. Now will send you therapy in a minute to talk about your issues because a lot of times the person who's overweight can't talk about the issues to their spouse. Many times because it's such a private thing that to expose that to their spouse is very scary. And that's not something you can push. Well, you must have issues, otherwise you would eat so much. So why don't you tell them what's going on? They're not going to tell you. When they're ready, they might tell you. But they will tell a third person, a doctor or a therapist, things that they'll never tell you. And can, does that mean you go around and encourage them, hey, you need to go to therapy and find out where you eat? It's a journey of self-discovery, and the partner or spouse, you're really a support role, you know? Either you're in for it for the long haul or you're not. You're going to have to deal with a lot of things as people change and do it. The only advice is you're going to find out if you love this person or not. If you think you love this person, you're going to find out if you do. Because it's going to be a tough journey. And I won't say it's any rougher, but in some ways it is psychological for the person who's not fat. Because they deal with a lot 
of stuff that they don't have anybody to talk about. You know, I wonder if they should start a group for partners of, of uh, overweight spouses. That might be a good idea for them to express some of the things and compare those. But anyway, I get a lot of questions about that. I get a lot of questions about our life at home and how we get along and white and black and all that. I could, I could talk all day about that. But this little vlog is just about that, particularly about how partners are. I don't have all the answers other than just support and try to do the best you can. And ask questions. It's okay to ask questions. Because you're going to see your partner make mistakes. You're going to see them, okay, fall off the wagon or whatever. There's really not much you can do except just be there as they themselves discover the path. Because in the final analysis, that's what we all do. You know, my dad's 85 years old. I saw him yesterday. He's bedridden. He's lived his whole life working hard, doing things, raising family, building stuff. I mean, just all kinds of productive activities. Well, he's coming down to the end of his life where he can't do anything. And you know, there's something, there's a wisdom there that in the end it's you and it's your path walk it alone. You have the surrounding family, but when you take that last step, you're taking that last step by yourself. So, you know, there's some wisdom in that. And I, I'm not going to talk about what I, my beliefs are about how all that works out. So anyway, I'm coming up on my mom's house in a minute. I hope you all have a good day. And I don't know if Diana's going to play all of this, but we shall see. I have got lots of stuff to talk about because my personality is... You know, if I want to talk about something, I want to talk straight to the person I want to talk. I like to, I like to make a connection. Carl Jung, who was a famous psychologist of the last century, along before they were, they were the two, two most famous people, he said in his whole life's experience, he's seen with maybe one or two exceptions that when people are together, there are two different personality types. I'm sure you've heard that. There's one that's outgoing in the crowd, and there's one that's not outgoing in the crowd. There's one that's outgoing when they're by themselves with one person, and there's one where there isn't, meaning there's an extrovert and an introvert. Can you imagine a life with two extroverts? And people go, well, introvert, they don't ever do anything. No, an introvert has plenty to say, but he likes to say it, or she likes to say it, one-on-one, -on -one because they like to make that connection to the person, not to a group of people, but to one person. There's something about that where we like to make it. So if an introvert lives an extrovert, we're always reaching out and make a connection. That's probably why extroverts are, are you know, with introverts, because that they, their introverts reaches out to them as an individual, and it works both ways. But anyway, let me turn this camera off, and uh, we shall see you next time. There's Ayana, listening to her stuff. Come take mom to the store and do a few things, and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.